adventure game key. He's solving riddles great and small. Adventure game key. Adventure games, he loves the ball. Every day is a new quest, exploring north, south, east, and west. Point and click to find the answers that we seek. Adventure Game Geek! Hello there, fellow adventurers! Today I'm going to take a break from reviewing older adventure games and play a more recent release, which, like my last review of Tex Murphy, also involves the detective. The Dark Side Detective was released in this year of 2017 AD and developed by Spooky Doorway, named of course after the door to my basement which once you enter you never come back out again. As Detective Francis McQueen you are part of the Dark Side Division, which consists of you and fellow officer Dooley. There are a total of six cases to solve involving all sorts of spooky goings on, and each case should take no more than an hour to complete, unless like me you enjoy taking some time to smell the roses and zombies. As you can see, the graphic style is on the cutting edge of modern technology. Okay, just kidding, it's really a homage to the classic pixel art of the past, just like The Last Door which also follows an episodic structure. This caters more to the casual gamer than the hardcore adventurer, where you can pick up and play each episode whenever you have some time to spare. So the question is, is this time well spent? Let's consult the magic die. Well, I guess the answer is yes! I actually found this to be quite a charming and fun game to play, full of light-hearted humour and likeable characters. One of the most memorable for me is Pastor Farrelly, who shoots holy water with a super soaker and talks like a surfer. There's even a talking toilet that has ambitions to become a comedian. Hey you! Wait, who said that? It's me, your toilet! I didn't know I had a talking toilet. Would you like to hear a joke? Uh, okay. Why couldn't the toilet paper cross the road? Uh, I don't know, why? It got stuck in a crack! <laughs> oh, toilet humor, what do you expect? Detective McQueen has been assigned to investigate paranormal activity in Twin Lakes, not to be confused with Twin Peaks. He isn't taken very seriously by his colleagues in the police force, especially McKing, who's a real douchebag and makes fun of his dorky activities. McQueen gets his own back, however, by putting laxative in McKing's coffee. I love how the smiley face on the cup changes to a sad face when you put in the laxative, so watch out for that next time someone gives you a coffee. Wait a sec. Dooley is McQueen's comic sidekick and is always making dumb comments, although I feel like he's smarter than he appears. The relationship between him and McQueen is really the heart of the game, and there's a somewhat gay vibe about him from some of the things he says. He also has a conspiracy website called Dooluminati.com, which they obviously just made up for the game. No way, it's real! They even sell tinfoil hats to stop the government from tracking your brainwaves. So, as long as you wear your tinfoil hat, the government will never find you. Before we start our investigations, let's take a quick look at the game options, where we can change the graphics to super high def. Huh, that doesn't look any different. What if we try virtual reality? No, that still looks the same. Okay, how about Spooky Vision? What the dooley? Oh, I get it. The developer's just having a laugh. There are other jokes like this that break the fourth wall and remind you that this is just a game, and the pixelated people on screen are performers on the stage constructed for them. My personal favorite is when you look in this bin. Many of the jokes are based on wordplay, starting with the case titles such as Malice in Wonderland and Dawn of the Dead. Then there's a plethora of movie and pop culture references, for example this machine that looks and talks like Hal from 2001 A Space Odyssey. Open the pod bay doors, Hal. I'm sorry Dave, I'm afraid I can't do that. 
or the poster in this cell that's a more obscure reference to the Shawshank Redemption. The whole of the second case takes place in a haunted library that has a definite Ghostbusters feel to it. In order to see the ghost, you need to use what's called a Viewmaster, which you may remember is this children's toy where you insert a reel of photos and by pulling a lever it shows you a slideshow. Let's take a trip to Sweden, the setting for the Cower Reed Mysteries. Well, what do we have here? Now you're able to communicate with the ghosts of authors such as Enid Blyton and Mary Shelley, who talk in literary speak. Then there's Edgar Allan Poe and H.P. Lovecraft, who have a hilarious debate about who's the better writer until they discover the true horror of Guy Light, a vampire love story that sounds suspiciously like Twilight. The creepiest thing for me though is how faceless the characters are, and the way they just stand there looking around like mannequins come to life. What's the matter? Don't you like your new scarf? Not especially. They don't walk around at all either, but despite this they are brought to life through their gestures and their dialogue, which can be totally random and off the wall sometimes. The Loch Ness case takes place at Camp What Am I Doing Here, where you team up with a group of kids who are in a pseudo scout pack called the Blood Wolves. Each kid has their own unique personality, like Emily who's addicted to marshmallows and is a total pyromaniac. This game feels like it's aimed at younger players, although there are a few mild adult references and sexual innuendo. There's one part where you need to help a ghost log on to the internet so he can surf porn. Speaking of which, one of my viewers suggested I take a look at the erotic FMV game Ghostly Desires, although I'd have to censor most of it. That was great, Jack. No one's ever done that just for me before. One of the things I love most about the game is the soundtrack composed by Ben Prunty, which evokes the spooky atmosphere but with a catchy electronic twist. My favourite track is at the beginning of Case 4, when we return to our everyday routine at the police station. After witnessing all the supernatural goings on, there's a pathos in the fact that mundane life goes on as always, and only McQueen and Dooley really understand the truth behind it all, while their colleagues are too busy working, partying or chatting up chicks. In the last case, there's one part where you take control of Officer Dooley for a short time as he investigates the sewers. Here he encounters your typical sewer gator enjoying his favourite TV shows and a familiar looking clown called Pound Smart. Aren't you going to say hello? While you're down here, try using the jackhammer on different things to get some amusing responses, and you can even use it on Dooley himself. Okay, forget the hammer, let's just try poking him. There's only so much I can say about this game because it's so short, but it really made me hungry for more as these zombies are hungry for brains. I'd love to explore more of the dark side world that we just get a glimpse of, with its city in ruins and a winged shadow flying overhead. So spread the word and go purchase this game on either GOG, Steam or Doluminati.com and hopefully we'll get to see the future adventures of McQueen and Dooley, solving crimes while looking coolie. McQueen and Dooley, solving crimes while looking coolie.